Today I'm going to teach you how to clone your computer's hard drive. This is an incredibly important procedure. In my old video that told you to not use an antivirus, I talked about restoring your computer to its original state every so often. And this is the only guaranteed way of protecting yourself from even an advanced virus. Start your computer from a known state a state which you have previously saved. And you do this by restoring from a cloned image. The procedure I will teach you today will work on any Intel-based computer using Linux, Windows, Mac OS, BSD, and so on. For this example, I'm just using a standard file system on my Linux PC. The solution will be completely free, and the software we are going to use is called Clonezilla. Are you interested? Well then, stay right there. I happen to need to make a clone of a Linux Brax router project I'm working on. So this gave me the opportunity to teach you this cloning technique. So let's start with a parts list. For today's example, I have an Intel Nook mini PC, which I have equipped with a portable monitor and keyboard. And in addition to the PC, we will need some other parts. This one here is a SanDisk 32 gigabyte cruiser. It's a USB stick. The names of the devices are important because we have to remember what we're dealing with during the cloning process. Then you'll need a storage device to store the clone image. In my case here, I'm using a Samsung T7 portable flash drive. This is a two terabyte flash drive. But I will tell you right now that we'll be using a tiny fraction of that. Then on my Intel NUC, I have an SSD drive, which is a 256 gigabyte drive. You may not know the model that's in your device, so we will not figure that out in advance as well. The first thing we have to do is to create a Clonezilla Live CD, which is what I did here and I even marked it. What this means is that we load a Linux image on this USB stick that has Clonezilla on it. We will then boot the device using the Clonezilla Live USB, and then that will give us access to the hard drive on the computer. Because the machine will be running Clonezilla, it really does not matter what OS is on the hard drive because it will be controlled by Clonezilla, which will be running Linux. So again, to repeat, although this example will use a computer running Ubuntu, it really doesn't matter. The procedure is exactly the same for Windows or an Intel-based Mac OS or Linux. Before anything else, your PC has to allow booting from a USB stick. In modern computers, this is not allowed because of a BIOS setting called Secure Boot. So this is the only step that is not the same on every computer. You need to know how to enter BIOS Setup and disable Secure Boot. On the Intel NUC, fortunately, they make it easy because there's a message at the bottom during boot time that tells me to press F2 during boot, and that will bring up BIOS setup. So it's different for every computer. Some computers you tap on F1, some you tap on F10. You have to kind of look at the instructions for your particular computer to see how you get to BIOS. So on the Intel NUC, I can then disable secure boot. I can also make sure that the USB drive is booted ahead of the hard drive, which will make things a little easier later on. Okay, first things first, we need to download the required software, which is Clonezilla. We also need to have a way to flash the Clonezilla image to the USB stick. So you need some other software to do the flashing. To flash from Windows, you can use Win32 Disk Imager. To flash from Mac OS or some other Linux without a built-in tool, you can use Balina Etcher. You can also use that for Windows. Or if you're a Linux expert, you can use Rufus on the command line, but I won't bother with that. Next, I will download the program needed to flash the USB stick. For my Ubuntu 22.04, I will use Balina Etcher. On the Balina website, I download the file in an app image format.
by default, this doesn't run on Linux. Always something. You would think this would be covered. Anyway, you have to go to the app image file and change permissions to allow it to be an executable. Then you need to go to the terminal and install libfuse2. And after that, you can run Belina Etcher. The Clonezilla version we need here is called Clonezilla Live. This is what the average person is going to use. The other solutions are more for people managing a lot of computers, like IT tech support. Now this gets confusing. You have to create a USB with the boot mode needed for your computer. Most modern computers use UEFI boot mode, so we will focus on that. Older devices will have the legacy boot mode, MBR. But to be honest, any computer in the last 10 years would be using UEFI boot mode. So we will download that version of Clonezilla. This is important. To make it easy to flash the USB drive, you should select the ISO image version of the download, not the zip file. Let's summarize. Clonezilla needs the UEFI version in ISO format. That's what you will pick. Fortunately, making a Clonezilla Live USB stick is a one-time process and you have a permanent tool available that you can use on any kind of Intel computer. Let's review our parts list here. I now have the Clonezilla USB stick and a portable flash drive. Something I recommend you do in advance is to create a folder on the flash drive where you keep your Clonezilla images. So I did that ahead of time and we will be referring to that later. Assuming you've set up the computer BIOS with secure boot disabled and the boot order has the USB stick first, we will plug in the USB stick and flash drive into the PC as I show you here and we boot the computer. This will start the Clonezilla program. For the most part, we will select all the defaults here like select the language and keyboard and then start Clonezilla. I'm using the first option, which is work with disk or partitions with images. Then I select local dev, use local device. Now when you continue, it will show you the devices you can use. This is important to note what drive you're backing it up to. I know that my clone image will be stored on the flash drive, which is the Samsung T7. So I will now press Control C to continue to the next step, which is to determine where to put the home part image or partition image. So I will select the Samsung T7. This is incredibly important not to screw this up. Now the next option it will give you is to see if you want to check the file system first for corruption before it does the cloning. I will select that step in case of problems with your hard drive. Then it will ask me to pick a folder on the flash drive where the image will be placed. I already pre-made a folder for this called Clonezilla Image Repository. So I will just select that. Now for the next step, I will use beginner mode to do the cloning. I will select 
the default save disk and then now you get to name the file. In my case, I will name it ubuntu.image. It will show me the disk that will be used for cloning. I will enable real-time checking of the file system, which will repair it before cloning. Again, it's something that you should do for safety. For time reasons, I will not check the saved image. You should check it. Then I will not do any encryption. Lastly, I have the option to specify what should happen when it is complete. In my case, I choose to leave it at the command prompt so I can see what happened if I leave it unattended. One more confirmation prompt and then the cloning will start. It actually doesn't take a long time at all. In my case, it takes under two minutes. So we are successful. I can show you that the flash drive now has the image in it. Now, how do we use this? The whole point, of course, is that in an emergency or as a regular procedure to eliminate malware, you restore your original PC image with all the programs. The normal procedure should be that you back up your documents separately. And then you restore your operating system with all your usual programs and then restore the documents. For most people, this is just the entire documents folder. To demonstrate that this work, I will restore the Ubuntu image exactly using the Clonezilla image. I do not have to restore it to the same computer. All that is necessary is that the hard drive on the target computer have at least the same or more disk space. To restore the image to the disk is almost the same procedure until you pick the option in beginner mode. So I will just use the same options until I get to that point. Now with this step, last time I used the save disk option, and this time we will use the restore disk option. Then it will give me the images it found in my image repository. The option that is important here is if the partition information will be from the image. Use the partition table from the image. The other option is create partition table proportionally. The second option is if your target drive is bigger than the original. If it is, the original drive or the same size, then choose the first option. I do not need to repeat checking the source image since presumably that was done before. The restore will now proceed. And now I've rebooted Ubuntu and everything looks normal in its restored state. Again, this is important if you ever worry about malware, especially if you set up your computers for your family. Make a backup and you will have a clean image that will wipe out any potential malware. Hope you enjoyed. Friends, we have products we make available that help support you in your privacy journey. We have the Google phones. We have our own Brax2 privacy phone. We also have various the Google Pixel models. We provide a degoogling service for phones you already own. We have Bytes VPN, which is a unique VPN service that protects your DNS 
does ad blocking and ad store support. We have Braxmail that has metadata free email. No one knows the location where the email is coming from. All these are on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.